Garden-based learning is a philosophy of curriculum wherein um, we use the garden to teach hands-on science and math. We like to incorporate a lot of writing into that. And inquiry-based teaching where we let the students take the lead on what the topic of study is going to be. Garden-based learning lets them question things. Like we have the vermicomposting in the room and we always talk about asking intelligent questions and we always want them to wonder why things are happening. And we have that happen a lot with the worm bin. My last year's crew were convinced worms were formed from when you break other worms apart. And then when they saw the little ones, they're like, well, that can't be right. So they're like, how do worms have babies? And we were obsessed with how worms have babies because they realized it's not when you <laughs> break it apart that will, in fact, kill them. You <laughs> actually reproduce. And it was like this whole big thing that never would have happened had they not had the opportunity to to see it because they just assumed, well, of course, you just tear it in half and voila, you have two. <laughs> so there's there's been a lot of opportunity for questioning also. Mm, our compost bin, we mm, have to mm, feed them or they're going to get angry at us. And one time we fed them oranges and it took them a long time to eat because we, it's like, it, yeah, there's too much acid yeah. and it gives them a belly. In our grow box, we're going to start growing three different kinds of like lettuce or three different kinds of roots. And we're going to use one cup with just like the normal dirt, one cup with potting soil, and then one cup using hopefully our worm dirt to compare which ones will grow faster or better. We thought garden-based learning was a good idea because we are mandated to teach science using 50% hands-on. And garden-based learning gives us the topic of study and the impetus to do the 50% hands-on. It also incorporates so many standards across the curriculum and with our next-gen standards. Um, it incorporates science, math, we can do writing, we can incorporate reading in there. We can also incorporate a little bit of social studies in there. First, they look like roots. Now, they're leaves. And then, they sprouted strawberries. At the end of last year, we decided to try to do a garden-based learning activity. Um, and we took the kids out and we measured and kind of plotted where we were going to put the seeds in different things. And I found by that how the kids were so excited and you're out and you're doing stuff hands-on, which I'm all about, is hands-on learning. And for me, this was perfect um, because it, the kids were engaged and they were in acting and they wanted to go out every day at lunch or recess and see, oh, did the plants grow? Where are they at? You know, and for me, I was like, great, we can measure and I can start bringing in you know, different activities with that. So that's how I kind of got motivated this year to really want to do it. I think we're motivated to garden-based learning instead of the traditional methods because um, it just gives the opportunity for them to to actively do it. It's so much different when we read about something and then we go outside and do it. Like for instance the other day we did a whole two weeks about plants and, and the veins and how the nutrients travel up through the stem and then we were putting everything in the compost and one of the little girls cracks it open or trying to crack open the tomato vine and then gets scissors and cuts it and she's like there's stuff in here because it was wet and I was like I know honey that's we talked about it traveling up up the stem and, all, and she's like but it's alive it's like we're killing it and it was such a I was like oh my gosh we've done this for two weeks and it wasn't until she's cutting the the plant outside that she realized they're alive and they're growing and they're uh, the comparison so it was really interesting to see because that never would have happened before mm -hmm. um, so I think it provides a lot of opportunities like that where they learn it in the book but you don't learn it until you do it right. so all of a sudden they're like oh oh and there's so many more light bulb moments and for my students who are in special education it really it's so great for them to be working with other students and working collaboratively and um, learning those skills of when we go out into the garden like everybody is going to have something that they are responsible for or they learn about those life skills of taking turns or responsibility or what happens if we have plants in the classroom what do we have to do to keep them alive so things as basic as that is you know really important as well it's helped the students become more responsible because sometimes I would forget about the worms because they're just in that bin, you know, in the corner. And they'd be like, Mrs. Fane, we have to feed the worms. And they were really excited to be responsible and they love to be the ones feeding it. Ever since the garden has come to fruition, we have started training 
teachers in how to teach in this way because it is a new way of teaching. And uh, we started with one teacher from every grade level, which started out being about six teachers. And we have now grown to about 30 teachers on a, a staff of about 50 teachers um, who are interested in using the garden as part of their curriculum. So good news spreads. That's, a, that's the good thing. Um, we've been able to, do, to use a lot of our professional development funding to give teachers additional training in how to do the garden-based learning and also it's given us the opportunity for teachers to partner with each other and collaborate and by doing that um, they partnered their classrooms together so we have a lot of fourth grade teachers classrooms partnering with say first grade and second grade partnering with the special education department and it really gives teachers the opportunity to learn from each other but then also the students to learn from each other too. The most helpful thing that Mrs. Meyer and I have found is to partner up with the teacher and co-plan together so that way you don't feel like you're on your own and you're not sure of what you're doing so you have idea, someone to bounce your ideas off of. Then it's like, wow, we did that. <laughs> and you have someone else, if you like, if you set the date, then you know, we have to do it today. Yeah. Otherwise you're canceling or I'll get to that later, but when you're with someone else it just helps you stay to your plan. And and the oh, kids perfect. enjoy working with the other classroom. Oh, yes. They were like, thank you for letting Mrs. Meyer come over. <laughs> when we did the homonym, yes. I said, we're going out to tour the garden. They're like, is Mrs. Fornage's class going to be out there? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so that part they enjoy. They like so they that. get to you know, partner up with another class and get to see other kids throughout the school day that they might not get to see except at recess. So they enjoy that. What else has changed? What else can you see? Especially if you come over this way and look. There's strawberries. There's strawberries. Did you guys think we would have strawberries already? No. No. Do you remember how many days did it Six. tell us? Six. It told us it would take 60 days to produce strawberries, and it happened before then, didn't it? Yeah. We only have two. Do you think we might have more in another month? Yeah. Yeah. Do you see it back there? I found that when I introduced the topic of gardening to the class, that they actually had a larger knowledge base than I expected. Um, and a lot of them had gardens at their house, or they have um, family members that live on a farm. The ones that don't have any gardening experience or have seen it think that things grow all year long, um, and that you can just produce any product at any time of the year. So I think that it's really important that they have the experience and more so that they can see how they can get around the fact that they may not be able to grow in the winter by either growing um, things in a cold frame box or growing it in the classroom. So they see how that can work, but also to get an understanding of just how the weather affects growing seasons, maybe we'll give them a greater appreciation of what's in the grocery store or why things are there at a certain time or even why fruits and vegetables taste better at certain times of the year. Through garden-based learning, we have come together with McDonald's and Black Bear, which are both um, restaurants here in Morgantown. And McDonald's, they are giving us coffee grounds. Um, each week we collect about 22 pounds of coffee grounds that we use for our composting. So we're recycling and putting less waste into landfills. Um, we're also using we're, our own waste right, from cafeteria. our kitchen. I think that we're getting about 70 to 100 pounds of waste from our own cafeteria here at North that we're composting. So Pre-consumed. Yeah, and that's a great lesson for the mm -hmm. students as well. I would say some of the benefits are we went to the farmer's market and we had students do presentations, so they're bringing in speaking into um, the whole project, they're marketing, they're pricing things at the market, they're bundling and learning about the business aspect of a garden um, along with product care and nutrition and um, all that good stuff. <laughs>